Today I'm going to be showing you a way you can turn your Mac down into a static site using MK Docs. I've been looking for a tool to help me turn Markdown into a static website and I found it useful. So I thought I could make this video to show you how to use MK Docs. So this is the official MK Docs project website and on this you can find the documentation to some of the things I'm going to talk about and more things that can allow you to build a website from Markdown. So to begin we're going to start by looking at what I have as my Markdown. Now I'm using GitHub pages to go ahead and render this Markdown as a website. But for now it's just a website with different content, it has code blocks, it has images and so on. The only thing it lacks is uh, the navigation, the search, and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to our VS Code and open up the Markdown we want to convert into the website. Now you can notice that this is split into different chapters and all these are found within our docs folder, just like you see right here. Inside that, I have an IMG folder or directory in which I have all the images that are to be used by our static website. So I also have an index.md file which is going to be the main entry point for our project or our website or it's going to be the index.md or the home page of our website. So once I have my markdown then I am going to go ahead and install mkdocs and also look into how we can configure this to make our static website. So to begin, I'm going to go within my virtual environment that's already created right here. So I'll begin by activating it with source env bin and activate. Now that may be something like scripts activate on Windows. Now when that is done and my virtual environment has been activated, then I'm going to go ahead and install mkdocs. So I'll say pip install mkdocs and that will go ahead and add MK docs to our virtual environment. Once MK docs has been installed, the next thing we're going to do is to create a simple MK docs project. So I'm going to go to my terminal and all I'll say is MK docs. And in this case, we shall call the new flag or the new option. And with this new command, we are going to go ahead and specify where we want, where we want to create our project. So we're going to specify that this project is going to be formed at the root of our folder or at the root of our project. So we're going to just say dot and that will create our config file inside our root project folder right here. So inside this configuration file which is mkdocs.yaml is where we're going to write the configurations that are going to help us to set up our website. So for now we have a default setting which is going to be the site name setting and what this does is to enable us to specify the name of our website. So in this case they are provided us with the name of my docs. But when you look into my files right here, I'm actually having the documentation for my upcoming first API course and I wonder why I'm even showing it to you now. But anyway, this is just the documentation for the first API course that I'm doing. It's just basically a website or markdown that has different parts and this is basically what it has. It has images and code and all the explanations that are going to be present within the course or the playlist that I'm going to upload. So basically what I want to do is to convert this into a static website that has things like navigation, that has chapters separated in a very good way and things such as search so that you can be able to search through the documentation and so on. So I've been able to install mkdocs right here. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all set up the name of our website. Now let me close some of the things I have in here. And to do that I'm going to come within mkdocs.yaml. Now let me make this a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is to first of all set up the name that we're going to call our website. So in this case I'm going to replace it with a name that's going to be the name of our website. So in this case I'll say first API and I want to call this the first API beyond cred series. And once I've been able to do that then this is going to change the name of the website. If you want to see what our change has done we shall have to save and when we save, we shall go to our terminal right here. 
if you want to serve and see the output that is present after we've made our changes then we we'll have to run our development server so mkdocs provides us with an with a development server that allows us to see the changes that we've done to our markdown or to mkdocs so for us to do that we shall say mkdocs it's going to be mkdocs and then serve so this will start up a local development server and this server will be started on localhost 8000 or on the IP address 127.0.0.1. So if you go ahead and visit this, when you follow this link, we shall notice that it's going to open up within our browser and then we shall see a beautiful website being created for the markdown that we have. And this is basically something that works. In fact, even if we try to navigate to the different parts of our project, we can see the various pages, we can see the content on those pages, and we can navigate to the various parts of our pages, and we can also view the images, and there's also some beautiful highlighting of the code that we are getting. So this just basically works out of the box. The only thing we can see right now is that our navigation is somehow disorganized. So to change this, what we're going to do is to go ahead and set up our mkdocs.yaml to add the configurations for our navigations. So to do that, what we're going to go ahead and do is to navigate to our mkdocs.yaml. And in case we want to set up our navigation, all we have to do is to provide the nav setting. So this nav setting is going to be one to basically mark a link to a specific part of our website. So in this case, what we shall do is to go ahead and set this up so that we have pages and then the different markdown files for those pages. So we're going to start with our home page and our home page in this case is going to be home and then colon and then we shall provide the space and then we provide the specific md file inside our docs folder so in this case we want our home page to be located on index.md so once we've been able to do that and we save our server is going to restart and then we shall head over to our documentation right here so in our documentation we shall have our home and our home is going to be the folder so this is going to be our folder right here and it's going to be first api dot first api beyond cred and this is going to be the index or the home page so when you try to add a new so we can go ahead and add a new page so let's call that project and we can add this and say that this is going to be our chapter chapter one dot md so i'm just going to simply point to chapter one dot md one dot md so if i go ahead and save our documentation is going to reload and in this case we are going to have two pages which is going to be our home page as well as our project so we navigate to projects we're now going to go to where our project page is going to start now i want you to notice one thing one thing you can notice is whenever you go to a page, you're having its entire layout on this side. So whatever you marked as the heading is going to be placed on this side so that you can easily navigate to that specific part of the page. Now let's make this more interesting. What if we wanted to add the rest of the chapters that we have inside our project to be sublinks within our project link? What do I mean? So in this case, if you want to create every link that's specific to our project to be sort of like a drop down that will show up when we click on project then we're going to go ahead and do that within our yaml file so when you go back here we can simply go back and press tab so that you, is going to kind of nest those links inside this project link so i'm just going to simply go ahead and nest this so i'll just come and say that this is going to be our so let's say uh the name of our chapter one is going to be uh so what did we call this i'm going to go to the heading and in this case we call it installation and setting up so i'm going to just copy it right here and then head over to what we have here and then add that i place the 
the colon and then i'll specify that this is going to be our chapter one dot md now we can also go ahead and do the same thing for our chapter two so i'll go ahead and go to our heading which is going to be creating a simple web server and then i'll simply go ahead and add that then i'll add the colon and then i'll specify this is going to be our chapter 2.md now i'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the links and then we shall be back so for now i've been able to basically attach each page onto a link and all those are going to be sublinks to the main project link so you know go ahead and save so we see that we have an error here so the error we faced was because we kind of made an error when writing our project key so we're going to have to get rid of the chapter one.md so when you go ahead and save this time it will basically render our markdown in a very good way so if we head over back to our documentation we're now going to have everything within our project link uh, having other sub links that lead to the other parts of our application now in this case if we try to navigate to creating a web server so now we can see the content under there the beauty is this can also go ahead and split it up into sub chapters so into it here we have the introduction you have creating a fast api instance creating a route running the application and so on so it basically follows the heading that you created and using those headings you can be able to display a very good navigation to lead you to the various content that is present on a single page so that's something very nice so we can also navigate to the different parts of our application and so on another thing that is going to be important when using mk docs is the search so we have a search that's built inside here and this search works straight out of the box so if you go ahead and search for something now let's say we search for sql model we shall now see the search results that are going to return the content from the markdown that we have presented throughout our entire project so in this case if we go to creating databases with sql model it will simply lead us to the part of our application that has that specific part that has sql model so this is very important if we wanted to search for something like let's say a virtual environment so i'll clear this and then we navigate to where we have a virtual environment or let's say virtual environment so in this case we have virtual environment creation it will go ahead and lead us to the specific part where we create the virtual environment so this is amazing so we also have previous and next link so if we go to the next page it will lead us to the next page that's present within our docs folder if we go to previous it will take us back to the previous page and this is something interesting Another very interesting thing about using MKDocs is the ability for you to customize your document or customize your website to suit the needs you have as far as theming is concerned. So now we are using the default MKDocs theme and it looks beautiful, but we can also try to navigate and look for other themes and try out whatever themes we want. Now, the way we can be able to fix or change our documentation to look a certain way is by adding the theme settings inside our mkdocs yaml file so once we are inside there we can go ahead and customize this so let me close what we have here and then put that to the left so in here we can just simply add the theme key and inside the theme key we can go ahead and provide the name for that specific our theme we want to use so in this case if we provide our name we can provide it with a value of let's say mk docs that's if you want to use our default theme as have our reload and when you go back to our web page it's going to have the default mk docs theme now another inbuilt theme is going to be the one for read the docs if you've navigated most python documentation of these libraries and frameworks you'll notice that they use read read the docs and they have a certain way of styling such documentation now if you want to add that to our website what you can do is to just come and say read the docs and save when we save our server is going to restart and then when we head over to our website we shall now see that it has changed to this interesting read the docs themed kind of documentation and we have previous and next url so we navigate to the next part of our website we can have this documentation styled this way
now don't worry i'll release this when i release my first api course but now all i can show is to how you to use mkdocs to generate this basic static website out of the markdown content that we have now we can be able to view sub links and all those things just like you see right here so it's very interesting how we can be able to set all this up so apart from this we can also navigate to the material design kind of theme that i'm going to show you in the next uh, part of the video so if you've looked at modern documentation such as that of first api you will not know that it uses mkdocs docs until you go to the footer and then you see that it actually uses material for mkdocs docs so i wanted to show you how that is going to look like so M material for mkdocs docs is what helps you to style your mkdocs website using material ui so you have access to all these components and all these themes that look like the that use the material ui kind of design so to get started we shall have to first install uh, our material theme so to do that i'll go and stop our server and then what i'll do is to install pip so i'll say pip install sorry i'll start by saying pip install and then in this case shall say mk docs and this will install the material theme for mk docs so that will go ahead and collect material theme for mk docs and then install it within our virtual environment now since everything is almost installed almost all packages are going to be already installed because i installed mk docs and then we can have our MK Docs material installed. So once we have that installed, all we have to do is to change the name of our theme from read, read the docs to material. So if I come right here and say material and save, uh, we shall have to just restart our server and then that will go ahead and run our documentation. So if we go back to our documentation right here, it will reload and then we'll have a documentation that is very similar to what we have here on the first API website. So this is interesting. I mean, you just have your Markdown, but through that Markdown, you can go ahead and generate a full documentation for your page. So when you try to test out the different features, for example, in this case, we have our home and inside our project, we have the sub links that we created in the previous uh, parts of this video. We can go to the installation part, can go to large project structure we can go to pretty much navigate to other parts of our application we can also go ahead and change some things for example we can add sort of like customizations to the colors that we have right here and the way we do that is by going to our theme settings and in this case we shall add one key for the palette so this is going to be our color palette and this palette is going to have our color so in this case if we want this to be red we shall save and then our server will reload so when you go back to our documentation right here uh seem like that is not working i think i made a mistake in the way i named palette so let me try to rename it i think it's double t if I save, refresh, seems it's not working. I guess I have to check the documentation itself. So that is basically going to the color section, changing the colors, and then we shall see the colors that are inbuilt within the theme. So we have red, pink, whatever, but then it's palette with a single L. So that's the mistake I had done. If I change this to palette with a single L, the same our documentation has to change and we shall have a single L. Have I made a mistake? I think I have because this is supposed to be theme and uh, name material palette color red. Uh, let me just check right here. So uh, they have um, color primary. I think that's primary. I think that's primary instead of color. So if I go ahead and change this from color to primary that will set the primary color of our page when you navigate back here it's supposed to reload and then it will set it to our color so if we go ahead and customize it we can say this is going to be our deep orange or our dark orange so just like you see the various colors that are provided or we can even say black when you say black and head over to our documentation it will reload and then we shall have our primary color as black so the header shall be set to color black if you want let's say deep orange 
uh, we can set our header to deep orange so our primary color will be set to deep orange and all active nav links will also be set to deep orange so basically that's how it looks like to develop your static site from your markdown using mk docs now before i close this i realize that there is no syntax highlighting for this specific type of arrangement or this specific theme but there is a snippet i've saved right here that will go ahead and add exactly that so if i go ahead and copy what we have here under the markdown extensions we can just simply go ahead and add that and what is what this will do is to just basically make use of other packages to go ahead and add syntax highlighting to our markdown so if i go ahead and save shall now notice that our documentation will have syntax highlighting for all the code blocks that we have within our project so i hope you've enjoyed this video before i conclude this video i'd like to briefly talk about pycon uganda pycon uganda is an annual developer conference where people who use python and python enthusiasts get together to talk about python please book your ticket down in the link that i'm going to leave in the description to secure your ticket for this year's pycon in this video, we looked at how we can generate websites from Markdown using MKDocs. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you've liked it, please consider leaving a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.